ओके सो ओनली कुरा साई समवन एंड सनी ओके सो यू टू गाइज आर न्यू सो यू आर फ्रॉम विच डिपार्टमेंट Pura Sai and Sunny, you guys are from which department? Electrical or instrumentation? Electrical, sir. And Sunny, what about you? Okay, electrical. So Nitish is from instrumentation. Okay. So we will start with then electronic measurement and instrumentation. So syllabus for this it is quite similar for electrical as well as instrumentation. you can see for electrical it is named as electrical and electronic measurement and for instrumentation people it is just measurement okay but the syllabus is just the same here you can see that this is a little bit less but they actually haven't actually done what they have actually summarized all the topics okay and here they have mentioned everything so in your electrical you can see bridges potentiometer so this is very important bridge circuit measurement of voltage current power energy so from this part usually they ask questions okay for electrical instrument transformer digital voltmeter and multimeter phase time and frequency so this will be measured using your cro so here it is written oscilloscopes and error analysis so these are the important topic for electrical if you go and see every year you can see that there are numerous question from bridge circuits okay now coming to instrumentation you have si unit standard rlc voltage current and frequency systematic and random errors in measurement expression of uncertainty accuracy and precision okay can anyone tell me what is the difference between accuracy and precision what is the difference between accuracy and precision means we are engineers we should be knowing this much that what is the difference between accuracy and precision okay so i will leave that as homework find out yourself what is the difference between accuracy and precision okay it's okay so in the next class once again i am going to ask you so next is propagation of error linear and weighted regression so this much you can see this two word is actually covering one small paragraph in your instrumentation okay so error analysis contains all these things now next is bridges in bridges we have to study wheatstone bridge kelvin bridge megohm bridge maxwell anderson shearing wain bridge for measurement of rlc and frequency now this much okay this much it is just written in one word which is bridge circuit precision is repetition of the same value yes very good and accuracy is getting a measurement which is nearer to your true value okay so i will explain so if suppose this is your true value of a measurement okay true value and if you have one instrument which is giving you reading something like this you take five readings and you get something like this so these red color they are your measured value okay measured value so you can see these measurement are precise why because you are getting the measured value nearby to each other but it is not accurate now if suppose you had got this measurement something like this so now this measurement is actually accurate as well as precise why because you can see the measurement is actually same as approximately same as the true value as well as they are nearer to each other and if you have one measurement if you take five measurements which have something like this so this measurement the blue color they are neither accurate nor precise because you can see what that they are 
not even nearer to each other and they are not even nearer to your true value. Okay, so this is the difference between accuracy and precision. Any doubt in this? So these are interview questions. Tell me, is it clear? Any doubt? Okay, fine. So I will explain also later on. Okay, so we were here. Now one important topic is Q meter. So for instrumentation, even for electrical, especially for instrumentation, I will say Q meter, there are questions. Okay. Each year, if they ask a question from measurement, there might be one mark question from Q meter. So Q meter is very important for instrumentation people. Next is measurement of voltage, current, power in single and three phase circuit, AC and DC current probe, true RMS meter, voltage and current scaling, instrument trans transformer, timer counter, time phase and frequency measurement. So this is CRO, digital voltmeter, digital multimeter, oscilloscope, shielding and grounding. Okay. So these are the topics that we need to study for your instrumentation and these are the topics that we have to study for your electric for your electrical engineering so any doubt in this any doubt anyone fine so next we have is what we have your resources and books okay so book if you see all the notes that i have made i have made using this two book kahani and dg liptech okay so this book you can find even sensor topic also, even your process control also, control system also. And in this, this is actually your college university level book. Okay, college or university level book. Here also you might find topic, but there are some error. So it is better if you are studying for gate, it is not good actually to refer any resources or book other than what notes I am going to give in the class that will be sufficient for you guys. Okay. So I will say only focus on class notes and for preparing your questions, I will say just prepare previous year question. So previous year question irrespective of the branch, you can prepare for electrical as well as instrumentation. And if you want more questions, okay, more questions. So what you can do, you can even practice the questions of engineering services. Okay. In engineering services for electronics as well as electrical, both have this topics. Okay. You guys will be having these topics in your ESE prelims paper of electronics and communication as well as electrical engineering. So that will be enough. Other than this, please don't refer any textbook because all the notes that I have compiled over the years, it is made from this two book. And even some of you, this is actually this JB Gupta book is actually a substitute or you can say just a copy of AK Sahani. Okay, that's it. So other than this, please don't refer anything because I will say this for measurement approximate marks for electrical, it is somewhere around four to five marks, not more than this. Okay, even less, even less. And from instrumentation, it is six to seven mark question. Okay, six to seven mark question. And if your concept is clear, okay, whatever I tell you in the class, if you are able to use or grasp those concepts, then it will be easier for you actually to solve any question. Okay, so one or two questions, it might be very, very difficult and you have to skip those questions if it comes in exam. But other than that, 90% of the questions that have been asked from your measurement, it is very, very simple. Okay. Any doubt in this? Tell me if you want to ask anything about the topic, you can ask me or else we are going to start the session. Okay. So a little bit about myself, I will let you know. So my name is Rahul. I have done my masters from IIT Hyderabad. My gate rank all India is 96 in 2020. And in 2014, my gate rank was 108. Okay. So a little bit about myself, you should be doing who is teaching you actually. So it's okay. Anna? So any doubt, anything regarding the topic you want to know. So you can ask at the moment or else we will be starting your 
measurement okay and we will be starting from this topic because i told you bridge circuit is the most important so we are going to study from bridge circuit only okay okay so first let me ask you what is measurement what do we mean by the term measurement okay what do we mean by measurement anyone want to say Uh, sir, comparison of uh, uh, quantity with some standard which is already set. Oh ho! Just wait a minute. Yeah, pardon. Just say once again. What did you say? Uh, comparison of the physical uh, significance of the quantity with some uh, standard which is already set. Yes, very good, very good. So, if suppose I have drawn this line, now I ask you, what is the dimension of this line? And what are you going to do? Simply, you are going to take one scale, and you are going to measure it. Now, what is the scale? now this scale has marks on them okay you are going to see in millimeters and centimeter so that is your standard quantity with the help of which we are measuring one unknown quantity so what is measurement measurement is result of comparison between a quantity and against means we are measuring a quantity with respect to a predefined standard okay so what i said measurement is a result of comparison between a quantity and predefined results okay predefined result now if you go to vegetable market and if you ask for any vegetable they have this bar okay 1 kg bar 500 gram bar okay so they basically what they do vegetable seller they compare that your weight of vegetable is compared against a predefined weight bar okay so that is what we mean by measurement now how do we actually define this predefined result in what way so predefined result we measure them against a standard which is known as si unit okay si unit like si unit for weight is what it is your kilogram for length it is meter for time it is second so all these things are what these are your standard units that we use so these are basically what these are known as your si unit okay now how do we basically measure how do we basically measure so we measure like if suppose i have drawn this line so how are we going to measure it we are going to measure it with the help of a scale okay or a ruler whatever you can say so i am not drawing all the demarcations over here so this is basically what this is your scale we will take the scale from this to this and we are going to measure the line in your centimeter or in millimeter or in meter meter whatever it is 
so this scale is actually what this is an instrument okay instrument so what is an instrument if i want to define instrument it is a device actually which performs measurement okay so device instrument is a device which performs measurement that device is called as what it is known as instrument okay any doubt in this so instrument is a device which actually helps us in measuring unknown quantity any doubt any doubt in this sunny nitish fine so now next what we do we are going to so these were basic thing because i am going to always use all this terminologies what is your measurement instrument so it is better actually to know all these things okay so with this we are going to start what we are going to start your bridge circuit okay bridge circuit now what is this bridge bridge circuit basically are a kind of circuit if i ask you what is a bridge network can anyone define me what is a bridge network bridge network means from your i guess from 10th class we are studying wheatstone bridge so if i ask you what is the definition of wheatstone bridge can you define it to me see today i will keep the class very simple so it's always why means i always do this thing the first class it should be very light or else it means whenever i was a student i used to feel the same way that the first class i shouldn't load you that much so it's okay today we will go a bit slow we will see all the things from the next class we are going to study for continuously for 2 hours okay so today it will be less so tell me what do we understand by bridge see you guys are studying bridge network from 10th or 11th class 11th class okay so you should be knowing what is a bridge circuit okay i will say so what is a bridge network bridge network is a special kind of network which has four nodes and four impedance which has a balance in balance condition we have a special case known as balance condition once again i am repeating so a bridge network it is a kind of a special network which contains four node and four impedance and a special condition which is known as a balance condition okay so you should be saying bridge network is what it is a special arrangement of four nodes and four impedance impedance or resistance okay so we are going to see that definition also it's okay if you have not written so now bridge circuit they are basically of two types dc bridge and ac bridge so in dc bridge we basically supply the supply is dc in ac bridge supply is ac okay supply is ac dc supply means what frequency is zero ac supply means what there is means frequency is not equal to zero or frequency is a positive value okay means continuously the voltage or the current is changing it is not constant with respect to time so in dc bridge what do you think what all elements circuit elements are going to be used what all circuit elements are going to be used in dc bridge so nitish you have studied network from me you can say resistor very good so in dc bridge we use only resistor why why can't we use inductor or capacitor sunny you want to say why can't we use inductor or capacitor okay nitish you say means you to know you will know okay so inductor basically in dc it is what it is short circuited and capacitor is open circuited so that is why we won't be using inductor and capacitor only resistors we are going to use in ac bridge there is no such constraint we can use r l c all the elements so phasers not be involved over here not involved here phasers are required sunny have you studied phasers 
तो योर दिस थिंग इज गोइंग ऑन ना नेटवर्क लेट बी नो बिकॉज देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच वी हैव टू स्टडी ओवर यर सो इट्स नॉट कंप्लीट ओके सो आई विल टेक इन विच टॉपिक इज गोइंग ऑन एट द मोमेंट इन नेटवर्क जस्ट लेट मी नो वंस almost completed okay so then you might be knowing phase so it's okay ha na okay fine so i was telling you about the types of bridge circuit now why do we require basically bridge circuit now i have classified basically what is bridge circuit i have classified bridge circuit into two parts dc bridge and ac bridge but the main question is why do we require bridge circuit anyone if we are reading something we should know the motivation okay why do we require bit circuit so bridge circuit bridge circuit it means first time it was actually invented i guess around in 18 means i have the date yeah 1880s okay so you can see it was introduced in 1883 we are going to talk about that also so bridge circuit it was invented in your 18 1800s okay late 1800s so at that time bridge circuit was actually used for the measurement of current voltage resistance as well as sometimes your inductance and capacitance so these are later okay in the later bridge means we have to change few things to measure inductance and capacitance but your initial bridge it was actually used to measure this three quantity which is current voltage and resistance okay so initially we didn't have ammeter or voltmeter so if we didn't have ammeter and voltmeter so we need to know how to measure current and voltage so it was done actually with the help of your bridge circuit okay bridge circuit it was used for measurement of current voltage resistance and then later on we were using also for measurement of inductor and capacitance that we are going to see okay later on when ammeter and voltmeter were discovered it was used for calibration of ammeter and voltmeter now what do we mean by calibration calibrate what do we mean by calibrate Hundred, one twenty, and one forty. Okay, and you have a needle. Okay, so this needle it is free to move either in this direction. When it is moving in this direction, that means your speed is increasing. If it moves in this direction, your speed is decreasing. So, how do you think this instrument? it got this marking okay it got this marking so these markings were actually available when we have calibrated it against a standard instrument now what do we mean by calibration calibration means we got this marking so exactly when this needle points at this value so it is showing that your car or motorcycle it is going at 80 km per hour 
so actually it was calibrated against a standard instrument for which this much needle rotation in theta it indicates 80 km per hour so this is known as calibration so calibration is what it is setting of an instrument against a known instrument is known as calibration of an instrument any doubt in this so it is used for calibration of ammeter and voltmeter after they were invented okay later on as ac current means it was more becoming famous so we it was used even for calibration of so as ac current was becoming very widely used in all the household purpose as well as industrial purpose it was used for the calibration of power factor power factor meter as well as quality factor meter okay so those things we are going to see as well as your dissipation factor and loss tangent now all this term it's okay if you don't know okay we are going to see them one by one later on what are all those things okay so even your bridge circuit it is used for calibration of power factor quality factor then your what it is used for your dissipation factor as well as calculating your loss tangent so not the same bridge circuit which we use for measurement of current voltage and resistance there are few changes that we need to do in the basic bridge circuit after that we are going to see that we are able to measure power factor quality factor okay so any doubt in this why do we require bridge circuit is it clear any doubt okay so next the first thing that we have is your wheatstone bridge so it was invented by charles wheatstone in 1883 okay so wheatstone bridge the pre means your initial or the basic wheatstone bridge it was used for the measurement of resistance okay measurement of resistance so basically what was the motivation for your wheatstone bridge so charles wheatstone once he observed this seesaw okay seesaw so two kids were playing so what happens once this goes up this comes down and in the next place this goes up and this goes means this goes down this goes up okay at one point what might happen that these two kids may balance each other if their weights are equal or if this kid is heavier what he or she might do they might shift towards the fulcrum and this light weight kid they might shift away, away from the fulcrum so we have seen this thing so this is known as what fulcrum okay so this was actually what the idea for wheatstone bridge so what wheatstone he thought that can we make one circuit electrical circuit which we can balance like this okay so this was the basic motivation for your wheatstone bridge okay okay can anyone tell me if suppose this is f1 this is f2 this length is l1 this length is l2 so when will this seesaw it will be in balance position when will it be in balance position when what is balanced what are we balancing over here exact quantity tell me that very good torque so we are going to do what we are going to balance torque so torque over here it will be what force f2 okay so i have written f2 over here so let this be l2 and this be l1 so f2 l2 
when it is equal to f1 l1 at that time we will get what we will get your balance condition okay balance condition very good sunny so this was actually the motivation for wheatstone bridge now suppose i have a circuit which looks like this i want to find this v1 so what will be v1 if i use voltage divider so that it will be 12 into 20 by 30 so this is 8 volt okay this is 8 volt now if suppose what i do the same circuit if i add few more resistance in parallel now this is v1 and let this be v2 so if i calculate v1 so v1 is what v1 is equal to your 12 into 20 by 30 so that is once again 8 volt this is for figure a and this is figure b and if i calculate v2 what it will be it will be once again you can see i can apply voltage divider so it will be equal to 12 into 10 by 15 so this is 2 by 3 4 so this is 8 volt so from this point only wheat stone he got the idea for your wheat stone bridge okay so this is the way in which we are getting wheat stone bridge so now if i measure the voltages between this two point so you can see that voltages are basically same v1 is equal to v2 and this is actually termed as your balanced bridge okay so this is the most basic bridge that we have so wheat stone bridge what is wheat stone bridge wheat stone bridge it is nothing but it is a series and parallel combination of four resistance you can see basically what that it is the series and parallel combination so these two are in series and combinedly these two are in parallel so wheatstone bridge is what it is the series parallel combination of four resistance which gives zero difference voltage at balance condition or zero voltage at your balance condition it is known as what it is known as your wheatstone bridge any doubt in this tell me any doubt sunny you have any doubt Okay, fine. So next, you might have seen Wheatstone Bridge in your textbook like this. Okay, so Wheatstone Bridge. What did I say? It is basically series and parallel combination of four resistance. So here you can see this. Now this is basically what this is your. This is one bridge circuit, or you can even say Wheatstone Bridge. now this if tell me is this balanced bridge or unbalanced bridge balanced or unbalanced balanced depending on resistance very good you cannot make a comment over here that whether this bridge is balanced or unbalanced because you don't know what is the value of resistance okay so r1 r2 r3 r4 r resistance now what is this d d is your detector 
now detector can be any one of the three it can be either your voltmeter it can be your ammeter or it can be your galvanometer out of these three it can be any one of the following so what does voltmeter does voltmeter what voltmeter does can you tell me voltmeter measures what does it measures now don't say it measures voltage i also know it measures voltage yes very good what kind of voltage potential difference so basically it measures thevenin voltage between two point okay thevenin voltage or thevenin voltage means what open circuited voltage ideal voltmeter i am talking about ideal voltmeter next is what ammeter so ammeter it measures what it measures not an current in a branch now what do we mean by not an current basically it measures your short circuit current next galvanometer what do we mean by galvanometer what does galvanometer do so anyone want to say what is galvanometer doing so galvanometer basically detects the presence of what anyone want to say so it detects the presence of current okay so galvani galvanometer what it does it detects the presence of current so the symbolic representation of voltmeter is v you know for ammeter it is a for galvanometer it is g now my one, one question to you guys what is the basic difference between ammeter and galvanometer ammeter and galvanometer see basically ammeter is also measuring current so measuring means detection also and galvanometer it is doing what it is detecting the presence of current so any difference that we have in between these two instrument ammeter gives the measurement of the value of i okay you that is one difference that basically it measures the value or the magnitude of current whereas galvanometer it doesn't does that okay you can say that anything else see basically ammeter it can measure high value of current high value whereas your galvanometer it measures just the presence or small value of current okay this is first difference another thing the scale of ammeter not the ammeter that is present in your digital multimeters okay not the digital multimeters that you have analog ammeter if you go and check those are big black box okay it looks something like this you have your instrument means your panel measurement panel over here you have some knobs over here this is one big box okay so those were analog ammeters so if you go and see the readings it might look like this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 okay it might look like this whereas this is for your ammeter whereas for your galvanometer it is something like this 
here it might be minus 1 minus 2 here it might be 1 2 okay so galvanometer basically it can detect the presence of current in both the direction whereas ammeter it cannot do so it can measure the direction of current in just one direction only okay so this is one more difference between ammeter and galvanometer tell me any doubt in this any doubt so if suppose this is your A point and B point and if you if the lead of this ammeter is connected like this this is the positive lead this is the negative lead okay if 2 ampere current is flowing then your needle will point over here if suppose you connect it in this way in ammeter like if this is your negative this is your positive your needle of the ammeter it will be over here only okay so you cannot measure direction in both the sides of ammeter is it clear any doubt any doubt tell me yes or no sunny you want to ask something Sir, aaj itnam chup chup hai. so total how many of you guys are there in your electrical and instrumentation so sai came he went Okay, I don't know what happened. Maybe some network issue. So only two or three guys you are there in your this thing. Measurement. Huh? Tell me. So I don't know actually how many of you are present in this. Okay, so today na, I won't be taking that long class because only two of you are present. So others might be skipping the class because they didn't know actually. So it's okay. So I will just finish this Wheatstone bridge. Okay, Wheatstone bridge. And then I will let you go. The AC bridges we are going to start in the next class. Okay, so we are going to start the AC bridge in the next class only because I guess I also didn't inform you guys that we have a class from 8.30. So before only I inform you guys. So it's okay. So we will study a little bit more and then I will leave you guys. Okay. So these, this was actually about what? This was about your detector. Now, let us study a little bit more about this Wheatstone Bridge. Okay, what is this Wheatstone Bridge? Okay, so at balance condition, what might happen? At balance condition, if suppose I am taking this D as your voltmeter, you can even take ammeter also. If you want, you can take ammeter also. So if this is voltmeter, what might happen in your balance condition? If this point is V1 and this is V2, so if your detector is voltmeter, then V1 minus V2 should be equal to 0. If your detector is ammeter, if this is ammeter, so what will happen? Current through this branch, it will be equal to 0. Okay, current through this branch, it will be equal to what? I is equal to 0. So you can take any one. Okay. Either you can take ammeter or you can take voltmeter. It is up to you and solve this. So I am taking this case. You have to solve as your homework for this one. So if suppose my detector is what? It is voltmeter. So if it is voltmeter, so let us calculate the condition for balance bridge. Okay, condition for balance bridge, let us see. So what is the condition for balance bridge? So V1 should be equal to V2. Okay, V1 should be equal to V2. Now, you know, voltmeter, what is the resistance of ideal voltmeter? Hmm. 
वॉट इज द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ आइडियल वोल्ट मीटर हैव वी फॉर गॉट और वॉट इन फाइनाइट वेरी गुड सो आर एम आर एम इज बेसिकली वॉट रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट इट इज इन फाइनाइट so infinite means what this will be open circuited and already i have told you what that basically your voltmeter it measures thevenin voltage between two point or thevenin voltage means what open circuited voltage so basically if you want to calculate v1 so v1 will be equal to what it will be equal to vs into r3 divided by R1 plus R3 is equal to V2. So now what is V2? V2 is equal to your Vs into R4 divided by R2 plus R4. So Vs Vs cancels. So cross multiply this. So this will be equal to what? R2 R3 plus R3 R4 is equal to R1 R4 plus R3 R4. So R3 R4 cancels from both sides. So what you get? R2 R3 is equal to R1 R4. So this is the condition for your balance bridge. And what it is basically the resistance of the opposite arm, or you can say product. of the resistance of opposite arm it should be equal to the product of resistance of the other opposite arm or you can even write it rewrite it like r2 by r4 is equal to r1 by r3 ratio of your adjacent arm it should be equal you can see from here r2 by r4 is equal to r1 by r3 so this is what this is the condition of balance bridge tell me any doubt in this condition of balance bridge any doubt anyone okay so condition of balance bridge we got from here okay so next we have few things that we have to see what it is it is basically bridge sensitivity okay so what do we mean by sensitivity over here sensitivity okay one thing i forgot if suppose out of this r1 r2 r3 r4 if my r4 is unknown okay if r4 is unknown so what you can do basically if you want to find the value of r4 so you have a voltmeter over here so r4 is equal to what r4 is equal to r3 sorry yeah r3 by r1 into r2 so now out of this r3 r2 r1 any one of the following should be a variable resistance okay so this is unknown so i shouldn't be writing it like this so this is your unknown resistance r4 is your unknown resistance now it's up to you let me assume that r2 is variable so if i vary r2 what might happen that this voltmeter reading the moment it reaches zero the moment it reaches zero what you are going to say that basically your bridge is balanced and at that time you have a particular value of r2 r1 and r3 with the help of which you can get r4 so anything what is the instrument with the help of which we get variable resistance variable resistance what is the instrument with the help of which we get variable resistance yeah potentiometer you can say anything else potentiometer is one very good anything else 
हैव यू इन योर कॉलेज हैव यू सीन दो बिग बॉक्स विच इज मीन्स वाउंडेड बाई वायर अ बिग बॉक्स विच लुक्स अ काइंड ऑफ लाइक दिस इंडक्टर Rheostat have you heard the name Rheostat so one is potentiometer another is Rheostat okay yes Rheostat fine okay so next we have to study breath sensitivity now what is what do you mean by the term sensitivity can you tell me what do we mean by sensitivity reaction of the instrument to a measurement what measurement smallest change for which bridge responds or you can say is it known as sensitivity or resolution tell me sunny are you telling me resolution or sensitivity tell me quickly are kaise matlab we don't have that much time so basically what do we mean by sensitivity what do we mean by sensitivity it is basically the ratio of change in output for the smallest change in your instrument it is known as sensitivity okay so it is the ratio of change in the output of an instrument to the change in which means the change by which we are doing in the measurement okay so that is what we mean by sensitivity or you can say basically sensitivity it is equal to the ratio of change in output with respect to the Fra means fractional change in output with respect to the fractional change in input so reaction smallest change for which bridge responds okay so this is what is your sensitivity sensitivity means what that basically the fractional change in output which we get for a fractional change in input so that is known by sensitivity now what is breath sensitivity at this particular point so breath sensitivity over here for this particular bridge is what it is the change over here output you can see is the voltage of this voltmeter and input is what input is the change in the resistance so there are different different breath sensitivity parameters okay we are going to see those breath sensitivity it can be defined in different different ways like if suppose this is voltmeter so we are going to have voltage sensitivity if this is ammeter we are going to have what we are going to have your current sensitivity of the bridge and there is one more thing which we have which is known as breath sensitivity okay tell me up to this point have you understood what i am telling please tell me yes or no this concept is a little bit tough one sunny any doubt sunny did you understand so sensitivity is what sensitivity is change in output with respect to the fractional change in input okay suppose if i have one amplifier okay one amplifier i have so if i give input as 2 volt my output is 10 volt okay so what is the gain over here gain is 5 okay gain is 5 how did i get that i got it with the ratio of output by input 
so that is 10 by 2 which is 5 now if suppose i have one potentiometer okay potentiometer now if suppose the potentiometer it is at 10 mm for 10 mm the voltage i am getting it is 20 volt so over here what is the gain gain is equal to 20 volt by 10 mm or that is 2 volt per mm. Now this quantity, you can see this is basically unitless. This is known as gain. Okay, this is gain known as gain. Even this is known as gain, but over here we have unit. So this is one special case of gain, which we call as sensitivity. So remember sensitivity is also gain which has your unit okay sensitivity is a gain which has unit tell me is that clear so sensitivity right one point sensitivity is defined as the ratio of change in output to change in input sensitivity is defined as the ratio of change in output to change in input or you can even write fractional change in output with respect to fractional change in input whichever you want to write okay next point sensitivity always exist for energy converter in bracket write sensors So sensitivity always you will get for sensors. Okay, so this is one important point. So I have already told you what is the difference between gain and sensitivity. Gain basically you get for amplifier or where input and output are same quantity. And sensitivity, when do you get? When input and output are dissimilar quantity or not same quantity, like your sensors. Okay, sensors. In sensors, you don't have what? You don't have input and output as same quantity, like your thermometer. Thermometer is a sensor. So, what basically happens? The change input is temperature. And output is basically what? It is the height of the mercury column. Okay. Height of the mercury column is calibrated in terms of temperature. So that is basically what? That is your sensitivity. Is it clear? Any doubt, please let me know. Srirad, so you are joining very, very late. So please watch the recorded session later on. Okay. Any doubt, let me know. Okay, so now in your Wheatstone bridge, we have three kinds of sensitivity. The first is what? It is your current sensitivity. It is defined as theta i. So theta i is basically what? If your, this detector, if this detector is equal to ammeter, means if your detector is ammeter, Okay, then this will be equal to detector current input is what input so if this is your ammeter, so this is the initial position. If it is indicating like this, so detector current, so this might be 0, 1 ampere, means 1 milliampere, 2 milliampere, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. So in output is your detector current, input is what? Input is this angle theta. So basically this will be what? Deflection in degree. 
so this is what this is known as your current sensitivity okay current sensitivity or even deflection can be in your mm also millimeters also it can be in degree also it can be in millimeter also usually you are going to see in millimeters only so then your unit for this one it will be milliampere divided by millimeter usually you are going to see this only next is your voltage sensitivity so same concept for this you have theta v so detector voltage divided by deflection in degree or in millimeter for this you will have basically millivolt by mm or millivolt per degree okay voltage sensitivity next is your breadth sensitivity now what is this breadth sensitivity so basically this current sensitivity and voltage sensitivity these are for your ammeter and voltmeter now the last stage is this breadth sensitivity means what for this whole bridge if i want to know the sensitivity see basically in the first two cases i am calculating the sensitivity of this voltmeter or for this ammeter now i want to know the sensitivity of this whole bridge okay in the first two cases i was just determining the sensitivity of this instrument now i want to determine the sensitivity of this whole bridge okay so then it will be what it will be basically so at this time so this is denoted by theta b so at this time basically it will be what detector now it can be either your ammeter voltmeter galvanometer so detector deflection okay detector deflection now it can be basically what the deflection we take it in mm or in degree like over here it is in theta or this can be what this can be in your millimeter divided by what is the input over here in this bridge what is the input what is input in this bridge basically what are you fluctuating over here which is causing this voltmeter ammeter or galvanometer to give you non zero reading resistance very good so here it will be basically what change in resistance okay so basically this will be what this will be your deflection denoted in theta divided by del r by r now what do we mean by this why do we require this del r by r so look over here initially initially let us assume r1 r4 is equal to r2 r3 so the bridge is balanced and let us assume like this that r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r3 is equal to r4 is equal to r all the resistance are same okay all the resistance are same or you can even take this as your case okay that your bridge is balanced now at this particular case okay at this two particular case what happens detector value is zero detector value is zero now what you need to do see this r2 i had taken this r2 as variable so if i vary this r2 if i vary this r2 the value of r2 it was initially r so i need to vary it by some value to get some output over here so by how much should i vary it let us assume the smallest change is del r which is detected by this detector so basically over here i am denoting that only that the smallest change in r with respect to the balanced value it is giving me the bridge sensitivity tell me is it clear so here i am taking fractional change in r this is this quantity is known as fractional resistance fractional change in resistance with respect to the balanced condition tell me is it clear
tell me is it clear any doubt sunny okay fine so this is what this is your breath sensitivity now we have few questions over here okay few questions 1 2 3 4 four questions are there from wheatstone bridge these are all gate questions so let us solve this question first and then this two question means all these questions will be homework this one this one and even this one i will send you the slides okay now tell me what is the answer for this question first let me know is this a bridge circuit is this a bridge circuit okay solve this question quickly okay or else let me solve it for you see this is actually a bridge circuit okay this is a bridge circuit only thing being that is what there is one hidden resistance and even if you can't figure out this hidden resistance let it be okay just wait a minute yeah so even if you can't figure it out let it be what is given the bridge circuit in the figure is balanced so they have already told you that this is your bridge circuit so you don't need to worry about that whether this is bridge circuit or not it is said that this is balanced bridge the value of the current i what will be this i is okay fine so if this is balanced bridge so v not will be equal to 0 if v not is equal to 0 let us assume that this is i1 and this is i2 so apply kvl in this loop in which loop in this loop okay i am going to apply in this loop so it will be what i1 into 1 kilo ohm plus 0 minus 2 is equal to 0 so i1 is equal to 2 milliampere okay i1 is equal to 2 milliampere and this i1 will flow through this branch even this i2 will flow from this branch so once again you apply kvl in this loop in this direction so it will be what 4 kilo ohm into i1 plus sorry so you can see now i am going in means my direction of kvl is opposite to the direction of current so this will be minus 2 kilo ohm into i2 is equal to 0 so i1 already i know it is 2 milliampere milo and kilo sorry milo i am telling milli and kilo they cancel out each other so this will be 8 is equal to 2 kilo ohm into i2 so i2 is equal to 4 milliampere so you have the value of i1 and i2 so if you apply kcl at this point i is equal to i1 plus i2 so that comes out to be 6 milliampere option d is your correct answer tell me any doubt in this question any doubt any doubt anyone fine there is one more way of solving this question how so note this down so if this is bridge circuit obviously there is one hidden resistance at this point so let this be r now it is said the bridge is balanced so i can find the value of this r how so resistance of the opposite branches product of resistance of the opposite branches should be equal so r into 4k is equal to 1 kilo ohm into 2 kilo ohm so value of r comes out to be 0.5 kilo ohm fine so if this is the value of r so you can see if this is i1 and this is i2 so what you can see basically i can find the value of this i1 i2 can i find this or not tell me 
can i find this or else it's okay so if this is okay let it be so you can see from here 2 volt is flowing okay and this is 0.5 so what is the current from here it will be equal to 4 milliampere now 4 milliampere will be flowing from here which we previously got if this is 4 milliampere so what will be the value of i i can use current division rule so 4 is equal to i into so this is 5 divided by 5 plus this is 2.5 so i is equal to uh, 4 into 7.5 by 5 so this is 2 this is 3 this is 2 so this is 6 milliampere once again you can see i am getting what i am getting my answer as 6 milliampere only tell me is it clear so there are different ways in which you can solve one question different ways any doubt in this let me know sunny any doubt okay fine so these are your homework question we will solve them in the next class and then we are going to start with ac bridges which is important okay so your this schedule will be uploaded on your this website and even i will inform you about the classes so i want all of you to be present this will be very short okay i guess the duration of the classes will be around 25 hours only because very less topics are there so we are going to cover the topics very soon and then we are going to have few question sessions also okay any doubt Okay so then we are going to end the session over here only